Okay, good day, boys and girls. Uh, today we are going to talk about classifying triangles. There are six ways we can classify triangles, three ways that we can classify them based on the length of their sides, and three ways that we can classify them based on the measure of the angles that are formed inside. So let's get to it. Some things we need to keep in mind about our triangles before we get started is that triangles can be classified by their side lengths, just as I've told you. That triangles are also classified by their angle measures, the point where the, those two line segments meet at the vertex. The angle measures of a triangle, if you wanted to know, are always equal to 180 degrees. If you're adding up measures, or the angle measures of a triangle, and don't get 180 degrees, you've done something incorrectly. Lines are used to mark congruent sides which tells you that they're the same length. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. And of course, as we all know, triangles are made up of three line segments. Remember, those are line segments because they have endpoints at both ends, and they are connected at a vertex when two of those line segments meet, and that is exactly what forms an angle. All right, let's get started. One of the uh, ways we can classify triangles by the length of their sides is if all three sides are equal. Now here, I'm marking lines of congruence. These lines indicate that all three sides are equal. Side BA is the same length as side AC, and that is the same length as side BC. In other words, all three of these lines are equal. It's easy to remember that an equilateral triangle means all three sides are equal because of the prefix equa. We often think about things like equal, meaning the same, we think about things like equidistance, meaning the same distance, there are lots of English word examples. Lateral, of course, refers to sides or side to side. So this literally means equal sides. An equal sided triangle is called an equilateral triangle. Now what happens if you have two sides that are equal, but one that's not? You've probably seen a triangle that looks like this. Maybe it's upside down. Sometimes it's called the ice cream scoop triangle. In a triangle like this, we call it isosceles. Now, iso is not a prefix that we're really used to in the English language, but it actually has Greek roots and does go back to mean something related with two or doubles. So isosceles means that you have two sides that are the same. In this case, side DE is congruent or equal to side FE. Obviously, side DF is not as long as the previous two. That's why I can't put a mark here. If I put a mark on side DF, I would be saying that all three sides are equal, and they're really not, as you can just tell from looking at it. So an isosceles triangle has two sides that are of equal length. I remember it because isosceles starts with the letter I, and I think about how I have two I's in my head. You might have heard that trick before. Equilateral, three sides that are equal. Isosceles, two sides that are equal. Well, what happens if you only have one side that's equal? Well, let's think about that. If you only have one side that's equal, then really you have no sides that are equal because there's only three sides. This is called a scalene triangle. Scalene triangles have all three different side lengths. You can probably tell just from looking, but if you needed to, you could get a ruler to check it. Side CA is clearly not the same length as side CB. AB is also not the same length as either of the two. Now, some kids will get confused and will try to put congruence marks here and here because they are similar. They are similar, but they are not congruent. They look like they could be. Break out a ruler and test it. Do not leave it to fate. Scalene triangles have no sides that are equal length. Remember, I said we can classify triangles based on their length, but we can also classify them based on their measure, the measure of their angle. So here we have something called a right triangle, and you should use the schema you have about right angles to figure out that a right triangle means that one of the angles is a right angle, and that is right there. It's usually marked for you with a little box if you see a triangle with a little box, they are screaming at you, hey, this is a right angle, or right triangle. So these two line segments come together 
at this vertex to form a perfect L, a 90 degree angle, which is exactly what it takes to be considered a right triangle. If it does not have a right angle, it might have a bunch of acute angles. Acute angle triangles have all three angles that form acute angles. Here you can tell that angle A, B, and C, none of them are 90 degrees or larger. None of them make that perfect L. They're all acute little angles. So therefore, if they have three acute angles, we call it an acute triangle. Easy, right? Of course, you can have an obtuse triangle. An obtuse triangle is considered so if it has at least one obtuse angle. Yes, it is true. Here and here, we have acute angles. You might think that makes it an acute triangle because there's two versus one. That is not the case. For an obtuse triangle to be so, it must only have one obtuse angle. That's all it takes. If it has one, then it is absolutely obtuse. You can test it by taking something that you know has a 90 degree angle, like this square or the edge of your paper, and laying it down on the line. If this were a 90 degree angle, it would match up perfectly. If it were an acute angle, it would be covered behind the square. But since it extends out, we know that that forms an obtuse angle and therefore makes this an obtuse triangle. Well, there you have it, boys and girls, a very quick demonstration of the six ways we can classify triangles. Now, remember, these classifications work hand in hand. You might have an acute triangle that's also a scalene triangle. You might have an equilateral triangle that's also an acute triangle. You never know how you're going to classify those triangles. You have to look at both sets of rules to make your uh, judgment. That is all. We will have another study cast soon about how to measure angles and also how to find the missing angles. So stay tuned for that.